So let's uh, go through an example here and see what we get to. And we're going to use just a generic example throughout the whole thing. I'm going to give you four scenarios and we're going to see how easy it is to assess the impact on profitability. We're going to change a lot of things here. So let's say that we have something that we sell. We sell it for 250 bucks. That's our sales price per unit. It costs us 150 bucks to invariable costs. So that our contribution margin per unit is 100 bucks or our contribution margin ratio is 40%. That's the assumption we're going to be working on. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change a few things. And we're going to give you four scenarios here. Now watch how easy this becomes. Let's say that we decide to increase our advertising by $10,000. And the marketing director tells us if we do that, we'll increase sales by 30000 Should we do it? So increase advertising by 10000 bucks will increase sales by 30000 You may think 30 is greater than 10 Do it. But hang on, we don't get to keep that 30000 From that 30000 we have to deduct our variable costs. So is it worth it? Yes or no? Well, let's find out. That extra $30,000 increase, we have a contribution margin ratio of 40%. So of that 30000 we get to keep 12 of it. That's, that's our contribution margin total is 40% because that's our ratio less our change in fixed costs, which are 10000 because we're increasing advertising, leaves an increase of $2,000. The answer is yes. Do it. Look how easy that was. I didn't have to rewrite the income statement at all. Look how easy that was. Let's, let's, let's try another one. Let's say that we want to make a better product than what we're making. So we're going to use better parts. So we increase our variable cost per unit by 10 bucks. We're using better parts. And our product manager says if we do this, this increase in quality should increase sales from 400 units to 400 and 480 units. So we'll sell 480 units instead of 400, but each one's going to cost us 10 bucks more. Should we do it? Here's how we figure it out. Well, we're now going to sell 480 units, and our contribution margin per unit is not going to be 100 bucks anymore because it's costing us an extra 10, we'll only get 90 bucks. So if we multiply that, we get 43,200 will be our total contribution margin. <clears throat> we used to sell 400 at 100 contribution margin, which was 40,000. So our contribution margin will increase by $3,200? Yes, do it. Let's try another one. Let's say we're gonna reduce our selling price by 20 bucks. Remember, from economics, we reduce our price, demand should increase, right? So let's reduce our selling price by 20 bucks. But we got to let people know, so let's increase our advertising expense by $15,000. Now our marketing director and our product manager says, hey, if we do these two things, if we reduce our price and increase our advertising, we should increase, we should increase our sales by 50%. They'll go from 400 to 600, should we do it? In a traditional format income statement, you would have to start with sales, less cost of goods sold. You'd have to start at the top and work your way down. Watch how easy this is. We're going to sell 600, but our contribution margin is not 100 bucks anymore because we reduced our selling price by 20 bucks. Our contribution margin per unit is only 80 bucks. So our total contribution margin will now be $48,000. Previously, it was 400 times 100 or 40,000. So our contribution margin increases by $8,000. But we have to take off the increase in fixed costs of 15,000. It cost us another 15,000 to get that eight. We end up with negative 7,000. Should we do it? No. Look how easy that was. I didn't have to rewrite the whole income statement. I just worked from our contribution margin per unit. That's it. <clears throat> Number four, let's get creative. The salespeople, let's stop paying them a fixed salary. Let's put them all on commission. That'll make them more motivated. If they're selling on commission, they're going to they're gonna push harder for a sale. So change sales from salary to commission. That'll increase our sales from 400 to 460 units. Increases sales 400 to 460 units. That's the impact on sales. But we get to save all of those salaries. So we're going to reduce our fixed cost by 6,000 bucks because they're not on salary anymore. However, we do increase our variable cost per unit because now we got to pay him a commission on every sale. 
we're going to pay them 15 bucks for every set they sell, for every unit they sell. So variable cost increased by 15 bucks a unit. Should we do it? Well, let's look at our new contribution margin. We're going to sell 460 units. Always start with the new one. 460 by what's our contribution margin per unit? It won't be 100 bucks anymore because we've got to pay another 15 in commission. It'll only be 85 bucks. So 460 times 85 bucks is 39,100. It used to be 400 units at $100 contribution margin per unit or 40,000. So our total contribution margin is going to drop by 900 bucks. But we save $6,000 in fixed costs, so let's add that back on. Let's add that 6,000 on cuz we save it. We end up ahead $5,100 by doing this. So yes, we should. Look how powerful this is. I didn't write out a single income statement. I want to stress that point. So here's some, here are some general rules. If our contribution margin increases, let's get an increase in there. If the increase in the contribution margin is greater than the increase in fixed costs, do it. Yes. If the drop in our contribution margin is less than the drop in fixed costs, do it. Everything else is a no.